Hello everybody, UIM Link here and welcome to the Ultimate's Guide to Sir Doman or Ziliana God Wars Dungeon. Um, this video has a ton to go over, like legit a ton to go over. I'm going to be going over the deaths and how to get back if you happen to die. I will also be going over how to kill the boss, how to gear up for the boss, and uh, what you should be killing for supplies for the boss. I'm going to be going over literally everything. Um, I will be going over a high level setup, which I highly recommend using. And I'll also be going over a low level setup, which will do you fine, but I wouldn't exactly use it myself. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoy the guide. If you do, please be sure to give this video a like and be sure to uh, give it a dislike if it wasn't what you expected or if there was a flaw in the guide. Please let me know in the comments. And uh, I will get right on to either remaking the guide or adding some type of annotation explaining my error. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Okay, so one of the first things that I want to talk about here is the deaths. The deaths are quite possibly one of the most important things that you have to worry about when soloing this boss. Uh, this boss is very hard to get back to if you definitely don't have a plan to get back there. And also, if you don't have diaries or if you don't have extra stamina doses when you happen to die, you're pretty much screwed. Now, what I mean by that is... In this instance where I have DC'd, I DC'd with a couple of stamina potions in my inventory. This will come in handy because when I get back into the room later on, I will have stamina doses to use to run around and pick up my items, which I will show you later on. If you don't have any stamina doses in your inventory, I highly recommend that you use the Explorer Ring to, of course, maintain your energy in the room while you run around and grab your items. Now, one of the most crucial things that I gotta say is that you are able to get up into the um, Edgeville Monastery, I believe it is, where you can grab monk robes. I believe everybody can do that if you're looking at this guide, but make sure that you go and grab one of those. Not only that, but before you actually go and do Sarah, make sure that you have a cape rack and room for a Zamorakian cape. It's probably in your best interest to throw that in your house beforehand. And also, while you're doing Sarah, be sure that you have a room pouch with the required runes in it for a house telly and also with your house telly be sure that you have tons of house teleports to get around so i'm talking about uh fally um edgeville teleport obviously um and there's another one lumbridge lumbridge would be very useful well actually if you have the home telly you can automatically teleport to lumbridge given that you have the runes but anyways make sure that you have those teleports um if you don't have a um jewelry box, I believe it is, and you can't teleport to Birthrobe to get cheese potatoes, then I'd highly recommend that you teleport to Falador from your house and run up all the way to the Warrior's Guild and grab potatoes there. Run energy is probably one of the most crucial things with this. Um, while you're getting kill count, if you're taking the high level route for this, you should have a blowpipe on you. If you do not have a blowpipe on you, you're going to have to grab a Adamant Longsword in Varrock, which can be bought pretty much, I believe it's south of the actual teleport, uh, be sure that you hit up Nightmare Zone before you actually go and buy that sword to get a lot of money out of your coffer, by the way. And you'll have to use the Advent Longsword. Personally, I've never tried using the Advent Longsword. I don't know how well it would go, but I know the... If you have a Blowpipe on you, you are pretty much solid. Like, Blowpipe kill count literally takes about 10 minutes, uh, maybe even 20. But for the most part, you'll be fine if you have a blowpipe. With the Adamant Longsword that you buy in Varrock, or if you have a mounted Excalibur, you can take that off uh, your house and use that. I'm not exactly sure how well that'll work, so just keep that in mind. You might not be able to get back in time, but you do have an hour. Uh, feel free to test how long it takes for you to get kill count with the Adamant Longsword if you'd like. But getting back to Sarah is pretty much easy. Just, just make sure that you have money in your coffer, an Adamant Longsword if you don't have a blowpipe, Make sure that you have your Zamorak and Saradomen uh, item to get into the uh, god place and make sure that you're not getting attacked. And also, um, make sure that your run energy is fine before you go into Saradomen. Make sure that you had stamina potions in the room or super energy potions in the room before you go in, because you will have to run around and get those items back. 
Uh, stamina potions if they're in the room, use them. Super energies, use them. If, if there is nothing, like I had said, be sure to bring an explorer's ring and recharge your energy while you run around the room and get your items. By all means, do not tank Saradomen if your items are on the ground, or Zilliana, my bad. Uh, do not tank Zilliana. I, ca I cannot stress that enough. I want to drill that into your heads. Do not try and tank Zilliana. Do not. Just don't. No. Don't never try it. Um, obviously, I forgot to talk about food, actually. Grab your food from the Warrior's Guild. If you have the jewelry box, be sure to grab it. Uh, we'll use the jewelry box to go to a birthrobe? Yes, birthrobe. And then run to the Warrior's Guild. If you don't have a jewelry box, you can use a strength cape if you'd like. Um, or, like I had said earlier, just use the Falador teleport and go upwards to the Warrior's Guild and then buy your cheese potatoes there. I think that pretty much goes over all of it. This was unscripted, so I might have missed something. If I did, be sure to comment down below. Um, but that is that is about sums up the uh, deaths. Uh, be sure to be weary of your deaths. A DC can happen at any time. Uh, just, just remember to think about the deaths before the, oh, I want a hilt, so let's go to Sarah. You know, just think about it first, because it could be very detrimental to your uh, ultimate items <laughs> that you have, of course. So uh, now that I got that part through, enjoy the rest of the guide of how to gear up and how to do the boss. Okay, so gearing up for the boss is rather easy. Uh, as you can see with the screen that I'm giving you a reference of, all you're pretty much going to need for this is going to be very high level range. I only recommend about 97 plus if you're if you're willing to grind this out, get a very, very high range level because the setup that I use does not use range potions and the kills take ages. Ages, I'm telling you. So, um... With this inventory set up here, it allows you to have the seed box, it allows you to have the silver sickle on hand so you can easily uh, make more potions and stuff to get ready. The only real requirement to this would be 77 herb lore, nature spirit quest to obviously get the silver sickle, uh, the blessed one by the way. A lot of agility levels, I recommend that because you get a lot of amylus and you also regenerate quite a bit of run energy while you're in the room. And also, this requires you to kill Zora, so... Be sure to get a bunch of brews from Zora, and you'll pretty much use them entirely from here. Uh, the setup is fairly easy. Bring Black Dragonhide or Carols, your choice. Keep in mind that you do have to bring a Zemrek and Saradomen item. In this case, my items are the Hasta as well as the Monk's Robe. So if you don't have a Hasta, be sure to bring like a cape of some sorts, and then use a whip for melee. Find some way to bring two uh, God of Wars dungeon items. If you're lucky enough to have gotten... Uh, Dragon Hide, Blessed Sarah Dehide, or whatever it's called, or Zami Blessed Dehide. Use that, obviously. Save some inventory space, and then use your whip for kill count or something. I don't really know. Use what you got. Other than that, the only other thing that I can think of would be a Serp Helm and a Blowpipe. These are by far what I would say they're pretty much necessary. Uh, the Blowpipe will damage Bree down enough so that when you're done with your kill, you can easily damage Bree and you have enough time to continue with your uh, next kill and uh, the blowpipe makes it so that you just shred through those uh, minions super easily uh, by the way I only recommend about mithril darts plus if you have uh, adamant darts use those if you have rune darts use those if you have steel or anything under steel don't use them just don't uh, mithril is probably the best dart that you can use because it's very easy to make and uh, you can pretty much just go to blast furnace for about an hour and make like 16,000 of them, I think it is. It's insane how many you can make. But um, that's pretty much the inventory setup. The only other thing that I pretty much use would be the house tellies. The house tellies uh, let me teleport to Kirill to easily get Mortmire Fungus. And um, the only other teleport besides that would probably be Edgeville because I get my uh, red spider eggs from the Edgeville dungeon. So be sure to have an Edgeville teleport. And the last thing would have to be noted potions. Those are pretty much necessary. I almost forgot to talk about those. Noted potions. So just make sure that you have the Desert Hard Diaries done. That's pretty much all. Uh, that goes over the entire setup. 
One thing that I do want to stress though is make sure that you have enough inventory space to pick up your items in one go. If you saw the previous clip of me getting my items back at Zilliana, you saw that I pretty much was only able to get one inventory full of items. So if you have a looting bag that's full and you're going to do Zilliana, be aware that you might lose some items and you might have to get rid of something very, very quick. So just be sure to limit how much you got in your looting bag, clean it out if possible, and then go to Zilliana. And that'll pretty much be it for the uh, setup and stuff. I'm pretty much going to go over how to kill the boss if you haven't even looked already. It's, it's very, very simple. Every single time you start your kill, you want to stand in this exact place. Make sure that your quick players, quick players, quick prayers have magic and eagle eye on them. As soon as you activate them, click on Zilliana, and then you will run south and hit the corner of the wall. Be sure to hit the corner of the wall. As you do that, turn on steel skin, so as soon as Starlight hits you, you can then uh, be protected a little bit. And once he goes in for a second hit, turn it off, hit Zilliana, and then continue. Now, the way you want to kill Zilliana is every time you hit a corner, you want to make sure you hit her. Every time you hit the middle of the room, you want to hit her. Corner, hit her, and then... Um, Obviously, the middle of the northern room, hit her, and then the corner, you want to continue hitting her. Just be sure that you're going against the wall, and you should be okay. Uh, if you have to brew up because your health is low, be sure to do it. If you have to drink a pair of potion, be sure to do it. And uh, if you have to stamina, be sure to do it. One thing that I forgot to mention in the past clip was the ammunition that I'm using, uh, or the bolts. The bolts that I'm using is diamond e-bolts, and the best way that I used to get them was doing KQ and getting the diamonds from KQ. The other thing that I did was Wintertide, but since then there was a nerf, and ultimately that no longer is a good method. That's pretty much all Zilliana is. Uh, the prayer flicking part of it at the end of the kill is actually easy. The way you set up the kill right here, which where I was showing you, you stand, turn on your quick prayers, and then run to the corner of the room. That basically sets them up to be able to flick them at the end of the kill. Uh, what I mean by flick them is flick Bree and Growler. Yeah, it's Growler. Um, Sadly, I don't actually have the end of this kill, but as you can see, Growler and Bree are actually attacking on different ticks, so basically you can prey mage while Growler attacks, but you can also prey range when Bree attacks, and this can save you a lot of health later on, I recommend doing this. Uh, Starlight, I don't exactly know how to flick Starlight, all I know is how to flick the two in the middle at the end of the kill. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching this video, I really do appreciate it. If you thought it was informational and you plan to do this on your ultimate, be sure to give it a like. Uh, one thing that I actually failed to go over was the easy way of doing Zilliana, and honestly I just don't want to do it because I don't really feel like it's a great way of doing it. But if you'd like, be sure to switch out the stamina potions with um, super energy potions. That's about all I can really give you there. I do not recommend using super energy potions because it's just not worth it, I guess, if you plan on grinding it out. But anyways, guys, that is about it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.